Uh, I bought a home in 1994 and lived in it as a primary residence until 2012. It is now a second home, so it's not your primary residence. What are the rules for capital gains if I sell? Um, what do you think there, Jeff? Well, <clears throat> normally we would want it to fall under the primary home exclusion, but that says you have to have lived in it for two out of the last five years, having been your primary home two of the last five years. Yep. And it fails in that test. So we really need to look at some other opportunities. Yeah, so this is basically, <laughs> if you had sold it in uh, 2015, you'd have had a big old exclusion. You wouldn't have paid tax on the capital gains, uh, single 250, 250,000, married, filing jointly, you would have had $500,000. But you waited too long. Right. So it's now just a regular old capital asset and it's subject to long-term capital gains if you sell it. Uh, that's if you just sell it as is. So long-term capital gains will be either zero 15% or 20% depending on how much you make and could go as high as 23.8 if you have the net investment income tax. Correct. So uh, what I would suggest, whenever somebody, whenever I see this, I always look and see how much gain are we talking about. So if it's 100,000 bucks, then you're probably just going to sell it. You're not going to want you know, worry about it. But if it's a lot, then you either make sure that you're living in it for two of the last five years and then you sell it or you convert it into an investment property, you put somebody in it, and then you sell it under a 1031 exchange. You exchange it for more real estate. So if it's a second home and you're like, hey, you know, it's, it's gone up a lot, and hey, I'd like some rental properties, or I wanna buy an apartment building, or some condos, or a mobile home, whatever, you could 1031 exchange that second home, but you have to make it into investment property. To make it into investment property, how long do you have to rent it for? 14 days? You're not very long, um, and, and really in determining if it's investment property or not is what you're using it for. Mm -hmm. uh, using it as a second home may disqualify it. May, that may make it a personal. Yeah, well, it's definitely right now as a second <clears throat> house. You have to convert it to an investment property. Right. The question is, I'm going to have to rent it to somebody, and then how long do I have to rent it for? And Realistically, you could do that pretty quick. In fact, technically, you don't have to rent it. You just have to make it available for rental. But I think you probably get scrutinized. If right. You, don't have you, rent. You, need, you really need to end personal use of that house. I would make sure that I'm renting it probably for six months. And then I'd sell it under a 1031 exchange. Uh, the other thing you do, is one of my partner loves to do, it's, it's Clint, is... Uh, what we look at is, yeah, and somebody just asked, is an intent the key? Yes, you can prove the intent. In other words, if I list that thing for to make it available as an investment property and I show that I listed it for six months and I could not find a renter, the market was just crud or whatever, and I, and I did a good faith effort, maybe I took some applications in and just nobody qualified and then I sold it, you'd win. It's an investment property. But you're probably going to get scrutinized because you don't have any income from it. So... You can still win. It's just I try to avoid having the issue at all. But the other one you could do is you could sell it under an installment sale to an S corp, increase its basis, uh, do a uh, it's, it's it's basically getting installment payments, which means part of it will be returning capital taxed at zero, part of it's going to be capital gains taxed at zero, fifteen, or twenty percent depending on your income, and part of it will be interest. And you spread that out. You can do that over 20, 20 years right. and, and spread that puppy out and uh, not get a big tax hit and step up the basis. And before everybody says, oh, my God, he said real estate in an escort. Yep. I sure did. This is one of the few times that I would do it. And what we're doing is we want that we want a new basis so we can depreciate that thing. Um, or in the case of an escort, like that's if you're going to keep it and rent it. Um, and you want to get, so, you know, get some of the money out. So, you know, the different, different strokes, different folks on, on this one. It really depends on how much there is. If it's a small amount, I wouldn't mess with any of it. If it's two, three hundred thousand dollars, then now I'm going to do something to try to avoid. The tax. Yeah, a small amount. You're going to be subject to the long term capital gains and it's probably not going to be that much tax. Yep. And it depends on what your taxable income is. So if you're in the lower tax brackets, you don't really care. Like, yeah, I'll pay a little tax. Say, love you.